Parkinson's disease, or PD as we call it for short, is a chronic, progressive, very debilitating um, neurodegenerative disorder, and it's characterized by both motor and non-motor symptoms. And what really happens is that there's a depletion of a particular substance in the brain called dopamine, and this is made by some cells that are within the, uh, the deeper portions of the brain. So let's talk a little bit about physiology. Um, there are some brain networks that tell our bodies or allow us to move when we do want to move and allow us to not move when we don't want to move. And if this chemical that allows the brain cells to talk to each other um, is depleted, then of course we have the symptoms of Parkinson's. What are some of the motor symptoms that we see in Parkinson's? So the classic, classic uh, symptom is tremor, all right? So patients can have a very slow, what we call writhing tremor. Um, it's been described as pill rolling because it kind of looks as though someone has a pill in their hand and you know it's moving. So there's tremor that can be very debilitating. Um, you can have tremor of the chins, tremor of the hands, tremor of the feet. Um, there's also akinesia or bradykinesia, which is the hallmark of Parkinson's disease. And what this simply means is slow movements. And sometimes these slow movements can be perceived by the patient um, and their family members as a weakness. All right? There's also rigidity, where there's stiffness of the joints. And sometimes that can be superimposed with the tremor and it feels like you're moving a cockwheel. All right. Um, finally, in the later stages of Parkinson's disease, you can see um, problems with balance. There's poor balance control, so-called postural instability. And again, as I mentioned, that happens later down in the disease. In addition to the motor symptoms, there are non-motor symptoms, and these come in different categories. So there can be sensory symptoms such as pain. Sometimes there can be um, a very debilitating pain from muscle contraction, um, uh, from antagonist, antagonistic muscles moving at the same time as so-called dystonias, and some abnormal writhing motions called dyskinesias. Those can be painful as well. Um, the dystonias come usually in advanced disease when medication are wearing off and the dyskinesias usually come um, when the medication is at its peak. But this is a phenomenon that we see um, later down in the disease course. Other symptoms include depression, anxiety and other mood disorders, excessive sweating, problems um, with bowel and bladder habits, sexual dysfunction, um, loss of appetite, loss of taste, loss of smell. The loss of smell particularly sometimes comes very early in disease it's a pre-motor symptom, so sometimes when um, your doctor's taking a history, it's important to let um, them know that you know, you've had a loss of smell. Some patients have constipation several years, even decades, sometimes before the onset of the disease, and this is how complex Parkinson's disease is. Another very important symptom or sign or pre-motor sign is REM sleep behavior disorder. So during REM sleep or rapid eye movement sleep, um, you're in a dream state and your brain sends signals to the body to remain still and not move. However, if this um, is defective, then during your dreams, you'll be acting out everything and you will not be inhibited. So this is typically reported by the, the, the patient's bed partner. Sometimes they report not being able to sleep in the same bed because their partner hits them or um, is really loud and just acting out the dreams. Usually the elderly population anywhere from um, the seventh decade onward um, is at highest risk. Um, so you'll find that persons from 60 to 70, the incidence is a lot higher than, than younger persons. Not to say, that's not to say that younger people cannot um, develop Parkinson's. There are several factors. They're, they're both environmental and genetic factors. So if you have a family history of Parkinson's disease, it's reasonable to reach out to your primary care physician just for an evaluation. One genetic factor that comes to mind is a mutation in a gene called um, PARC2. That's one, um, one huge, rich, huge risk factor. Some of the environmental factors or factors outside of genetics can include lack of exercise, um, 
uh, in addition to that, some persons go to the physician because of nausea, vomiting, or dizziness, and they're treated with a certain class of medications that block the action of this substance, dopamine, that's so important for movement, and they develop medication-induced Parkinson's. And sometimes it can be difficult to, to decipher, especially if a patient comes to your clinic and you know doesn't give a full list of the medications or the history that they had dizziness or vomiting and were treated for that before. We do have several treatments for Parkinson's. The classic treatment is to just replace this dopamine that was missing, and that, that medication is called levodopa. It's coupled with another medication called carbidopa that allows the medication to not be broken down in the GI tract, all right? Um, there's some other medications that are available that can stimulate the, the dopamine receptors. Um, and these also, you know, patients usually do fairly well on them. However, um, the levodopa, carbidopa, or as we say, Cinemet, um, is the best medication by far for, for, for Parkinson's disease. It's really important to note that not everyone with Parkinson's disease needs treatment. Um, so it's important to talk to your doctor to, you know, to express whether or not your symptoms are debilitating or they affect your, your, your everyday life and um, if so then you should probably go on treatment. The medical benefit scheme has been phenomenal in their support um, for persons with Parkinson's disease. Um, they've been very open to my request for um, uh, for medications that were not previously on the formulary. So medical benefit heavily subsidizes the healthcare in Antigua and for that we are immensely grateful. Um, all of the medications that we use to treat Parkinson's um, are available through the medical benefit scheme. So as long as you pay into the system, um, they will be available for you. If you're, you're, you think you're experiencing symptoms of Parkinson's disease, to um, speak with your primary care physician and your primary care physician um, should give us a call, um, write a referral to our clinic, and we'll try to get you seen as soon as possible so we can you know, evaluate you, get a definitive diagnosis, and make a, a, an appropriate care plan that's tailored to you specifically. There's no treatment that will cure the disease, all right? Um, there's nothing that will stop the natural progression. However, we can control the symptoms. Um, in terms of reducing the risk, the most important thing I'm going to stress again is um, regular strenuous exercise. There's a huge mental impact and we can't speak about anything in neurology without speaking about mental health, all right? Um, many neurological disorders, many medical disorders also um, have a psychological component. Um, you know, so sometimes receiving a diagnosis of Parkinson's disease is, you know, it's a lot to process. Um, uh, and on top of that, even the natural progression of, of the disease can lead to mood disorders that we spoke about before. So there's overlying um, anxiety and depression from the natural disease process, as well as coping with the disease. Now, um, it's really important to seek a healthcare provider who is a professional in mental health, be it a psychologist or a psychiatrist, and there are several other mental health care providers that can provide you with services to, um, to help you navigate your emotions and mood. It's really important to be patient um, uh, with your with your loved one with Parkinson's disease. Um, there is a website that you can also go to. Um, it's called Parkinson's.org, um, where you can go to for information about the disease. It's important to read up and you know be very familiar with what's happening to your loved one as well as what can happen because of the natural progression. Some of the things to be aware of is um, would include um, problems. With swallowing. In very advanced disease, patients lose the ability to swallow effectively and they can um, unfortunately have a poor oral intake which can lead to weight loss and just generalized wasting. It can lead to infections by way of aspirations, that is to say um, the 
contents in the mouth, be it um, uh, the patient's own saliva or any food content, uh, rather than going down into the GI tract, it can go down into the respiratory tract and cause a, um, a really bad pneumonia, and that in itself can, can actually lead to death. One of the things that we focus on in clinic and we always want to acknowledge is caregiver burden. And that's not just for Parkinson's disease, that's just, this is for every single um, uh, medical illness. There is a huge caretaker burden and it's important um, to note that if you're not well, um, you, you, you're unable to take care of your loved one regardless of the, the, the situation. Um, one important thing is to share the burden of taking care. You can take shifts with other family members or friends. Um, there's always social work that you can reach out to if you need help with anything. Um, again, do your regular health checks. Um, it's important to have a conversation and communicate and not bottle in your feelings because um, you can also have symptoms of depression and anxiety when dealing with a sick family member. You're, you know, you're unable to make a run to the supermarket. Depending on the situation, all is not lost with the diagnosis of Parkinson's. You can still live a very um, wholesome, fruitful life, happy life with, um, with Parkinson's disease. Um, because sometimes the disease progresses very slowly and their symptoms are mild and manageable.